Hello everyone and welcome back to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. In this episode, let's take a look at what we've got as far as contracts. First of all, we still need to explore the moon and return to Kerbin from the surface of the moon. We still need to put a satellite into orbit around the moon. Probably we should do that before trying to land again. But uh, we also have some interesting satellite contracts. Uh, position another satellite in equatorial orbit around Kerbin. It's a uh, lower orbit, so that's good. I wanted a lower orbit satellite, so we'll pick that up. And uh, position a satellite in a specific orbit of the moon. Well, we're going to have another one here, but we might, might as well have more than one. It's fine. So uh, we'll do this. It's just a thermometer. Yeah, okay. That's uh, a retrograde orbit again. Uh, I don't know why they want those, but okay. And a retrograde orbit around Minmus. Um, let's get this other Kerbin one first, though. I don't want to make this uh, completely about commsats, but we're going to launch a bunch of commsats. So, uh, we've got space for one more. And so, I'm just going to fill up with a whole bunch of commsat things. And we'll try and, like, launch them on a single launcher, maybe. Not all of them. Well, you know, <laughs> now that I mention it, uh, well, it depends. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, synchronized orbit around Minmus. This one pays more and gives more science. I'll take it. Okay. And um, I guess, oh, well, I won't unlock the astronaut complex yet. I'll do that, but uh, I'll wait until we get some of these commsats up. And that's because, well, I don't want, I don't have space for the EVA contracts, I mean the rescue contracts anyway, so. Okay, let me get to work on building some commsats and I'll be back with those. Okay, so we have a setup for Needsat 2 and we're gonna try and launch three of these satellites at the same time. Uh, two around Kerbin, one around the moon. And uh, we've got helical antennas around the two round Kerbin, but around the moon I don't think we need those because the moon sat's gonna be within range of the surface and then its own internal antenna can communicate directly to Earth, which is quite a thing and which is why I unlocked this obelisk uh, probe core. I noticed that it had not only its, uh, well, it's got this antenna that's only five kilometers, which I don't even know why it has that, but okay because it's got this relay antenna that's 8,000 kilometers, um, which obviously beats that out. That only works though if you extend the antennae, so maybe that's the thing. So yeah, it's it's heavier than this AMBA probe core. This AMBA probe core is only five kilograms, this is 84 kilograms. But when you think about the, uh, the antenna, this 8,000 kilometer antenna is on par with the Seagull antenna, which is also 8,000 kilometers, so... And this is 800 bucks, um, 0.02 tons. This is 0.08 tons, but I mean, it's only 1,000 funds in cost, so it's a, it's a good deal. Uh, we're relying solely on its electric charge for each of these because we don't have much part count. I'm at 30 parts right now. Um, we put thermometers on all of them because uh, the first one doesn't strictly need a thermometer, but we'll have it on anyway. Or maybe I should take it off. I mean, it is extra cost that we don't need to do, right? So taking a look, uh, equatorial orbit can generate power and yeah, it doesn't say anything about thermometers. So I'll just take off the thermometer. Uh, we've got this Decker engine here. I'm not using the Alpha Star this time, even though it has more ignitions. Uh, because I wanted the better ISP. It gives us better um, Delta V, about 500 meters per second more. And then finally here we are using four Merlin 1Bs again. Uh, we're going to be using a lot of Merlins, I get the feeling. Uh, so this is going to be uh, 2 minutes and 18 seconds and uh, burn time 5 minutes 50, so that's fine. Okay, so that is our satellite launcher. So we'll just use this uh, Decker as a little bus to uh, get them to where they need to be. Uh, plop them off. They all decouple one at a time. I was hoping to give them individual fuel, but we just don't have any tanks for that. And the technology where we'd unlock the Oscar B tank or something equivalent is uh, 90 science. We only have 75. 
Otherwise, you know, I would definitely have given them that, or I would have loved to give them some uh, some uh, mob propellant thrusters or something like that. But we don't even have appropriate tanks for these. Uh, and I looked. Uh, there's. Um, hold on. Let me show you the tech tree. Uh, this is flight control, and this has all sorts of RCS thrusters in it, which is wonderful. But no good RCS tanks. Uh, no, none of the little, um, you know, spherical ones. It's got a spherical module for some reason, but it doesn't have a spherical tank. Uh, where do those come up? I guess maybe here. Here. Uh, we. Uh, so that's under 90 science again. But yeah, we don't get them here, which makes the RCS thrusters not very useful because we'd have to carry a pretty big RCS tank to use them. It's not the greatest deal. Again, the smallest tank we have right now is this one. So yeah, that was not very convenient. Not for our purposes. Okay, so let's see if this works. Okay, so... Oh, the little engine bells aren't as shiny as I thought they would be. A little bit dark down there. Maybe in the shadow. Alright, SAS on. Uh, throttle is up. Up? Up? Yeah, okay. And... That staging isn't great. Alright. Launch. Somebody suggested uh, adjusting the colors. I'm not gonna do that for now. I'm not gonna tweak uh, KS3P for the time being. Oh, so, uh, when I talk about de uh, calculating delta Vs, I understand that there is a delta V map, okay? I, I knew that from the start. I I'm just giving uh, alternate ways to check numbers, basically. It's good to be able to estimate things on the fly, uh, to make sure that other numbers that you have, like the delta V readings on the side here, are correct. And so having alternate ways to verify numbers is not a bad thing. Uh, don't just rely on a Delta V map. Uh, you have to have some of your own sense of, for instance, how much does it take for you to land? Is that, uh, is it giving you enough margin? That sort of thing. And using the escape velocity as a reference point for, you know, uh, do I take more than the escape velocity or less than the escape velocity to land? Knowing that is a very handy little detail. Okay, I'm gonna throw down. It's a handy little detail that allow you to judge, you know, the Delta V map. You know, is it really giving you the margin that you need to uh, handle the mission? And of course, Delta V maps are just estimates as they are. They're not 100% accurate, especially when there's inclination or eccentricity. That's why, you know, we've got like a pork chop plot for, well, we don't have Maneuver Planner active right now in MechJib. So uh, pork chop plot. Uh, gives you a more realistic sense of how much delta V it takes to transfer from one place to another because inclination and eccentricity complicate the matter for any sort of delta V map. And thrust weight ratio complicates the matter for ascent and descent. So those numbers are inaccurate uh, for different thrust to weight ratios. Okay, lots of vibrations and wiggling separation. And uh, we'll wait on ignition. Okay, ignition. Okay, let's take a look at the situation. We're here. Target orbit's out there. Just to save on ignitions, maybe I'll just let it keep burning. I'm sort of letting this apoapsis trick. Oh, we lost communication. Oh, gosh darn it. These two commsats really don't do anything, as far as I can tell. They didn't have enough antenna or something? Because that one should have helped in a planetary space at this point. I don't suppose there are some speed records. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be going out. Let's uh, get the science, such as it is, started. Telemetry. Uh, let's get this thermometer. Nope, oh, we're in interplanetary space. We have 18% communication left. Oh, okay, it's got sun space high, sun space high. It's just waiting to transmit, I think. Okay, it already did them just now. Okay. Let's see if we can get them in before 
Oh, uh, it's two bits per second, it says. Yeah, I don't think we gotta be able to transmit any of these. So we got science, but we weren't able to transmit science. Well, such is the way with interplanetary probes, though this was never meant to be an interplanetary probe. Okay, all right, it happens to be nighttime, but our electric charge is running out, so I'm just going to go ahead and launch. Now, this time, we'll just get into a parking orbit first in order to ensure communication, so uh, we'll try and make this as quick as possible. I'll get that orbit information out. SAS on and ignition. So a low parking orbit. I'm thinking of putting in stage recovery and Kerbal reusability expansion simply because, you know, that might help with our funding. Also, with all the use of Merlins, I feel like it ought to be done. Okay, separation. And separation. <laughs> and ignition. And let's get rid of the fairing. Oh god, we lost communication just when I was about to shut down. Gosh darn it! God forbid there would be some sort of downrange communication thing like the island airfield right there! Why the heck is the island airfield not one? It's right there. It's like Bermuda. We can't even get through a launch without losing communication. This is not realisms. <laughs> The other one uh, has an orbit that goes out to Edna and Drez. Potentially. Okay, well, we're gonna need a different strategy here. Um, hmm. Launch it really high? Okay, this might be a silly thing and just might not be my day for communications or something, but I'll try and launch it steeper. And because uh, we basically just ran out of communication right when I was about to shut down last time. And also try not throttling down the first stage, so we'll get through it quicker and we'll pitch down if necessary. We'll already be higher up as it is. Okay, so launch. So I'm actually gonna aim for uh, orbit about 200 kilometers this time. Way high up compared to what I normally do. Not as efficient, but uh, you know, compared to the last two, probably better. Okay, separation, separation and ignition, and fairings. Okay, we are indeed on a higher trajectory. I'll get the antennae out. Heck, I'll get all the antennae out. I mean, it's probably gonna end up a lopsided orbit, but still better than the alternative. And shut down. Okay. So we'll reacquire down here and boost up again to get to our target level. And then we'll work from there. Should have everything set. Okay, we've just acquired the KSC, so we're gonna go orbit prograde. And ignition. It's a relatively circular orbit, so it doesn't matter that we're not hitting at the apoapsis or periapsis, and we're already at zero degree inclination, so no need to worry about the inclination either. Okay, that should do the trick. Let's get out there. I don't know if this is actually going to be a synchronous orbit, but it's somewhat where I would expect one to be. At least it's closer than uh, those out there. That That's definitely not one. Um, so, maybe. I'll have to calculate it sometime. Well, let's see. Oh, we can't see. We've got the period locked. Once we get the tracking station unlocked, we'd be able to see what its period is and be able to find out like that. Seems like we need to pitch up here. Okay, it's satisfied with that. We do actually want to leave the probe here. Okay, we got that contract done. 
So we're going to eject off the probe. Unfortunately, the only small uh, separators I had were stack separators, not decouplers, so. Okay, so we're going to rename this needsat2a and call it a relay. And it can go ahead and not do the telemetry. That'll be fine. I uh, it's got twenty four kilom uh, twenty four thousand kilometers, so that should be enough to communicate with anything in low carbon orbit. It's not really where I'd like it to be, but we'll work with it for now. Uh, we can't reposition it because it doesn't have its own uh, power. I mean, its own thrust. So next. We need to get up to that orbit, and actually right now would be good. We could burn to that descending node so that we can adjust our inclination. We've got communication, obviously. One thing we don't want to do is bump into that probe. Which seems likely. I should have released it at a different angle. Um, gonna slightly ignite the engine here and then turn prograde. So we've got 2,000 meters per second more. Oh, we might be a little bit early. Okay, I'm gonna wait a bit, because we seem to be a little bit early to get the apoapsis out or descending node there. And that'll be good enough. Okay, let's uh, face the sun again. Oh, we got a temperature scan for moon space high. Uh, hold on, let me check on it. We can actually switch vessels from here, I guess. I'll just leave it with MechJeb. I don't know if that's the best or not, but let's leave it with MechJeb. Because uh, persistent rotation right now, and I have this here, it doesn't seem to... And I turn on SAS, of course. It doesn't give me the ability to change the reference body and point towards it, so I'm gonna assume that we don't we haven't unlocked that function yet or something. And we'll need to go back to tracking station to change vessels. Okay, so what we need to do is point a little bit north and east, so northeast. Okay, let's see how that changes our descending node. Yep, that's fine. And we've got that one. Alright. Well, this time let's initially release normal. Got 1,143 left right now. Double. So finally, the moon. Well, we can't target it. <laughs> and now we're in a lopsided orbit, that makes it a little bit harder. But um, what, by the time we get to periapsis, I think we'll be able to push our apoapsis here. We'll see. But in any case, this is probably the... Oh, that doesn't look right, does it? Uh, right here-ish. So maybe right about now would be a good time. Without the ability to plot it, it's a little bit difficult. One thousand four hundred and twenty-three. Now that we release the other satellite ignition, Oop. don't need a whole lot to boost up. Perhaps we should boost past a little bit. It might take a few goes for us to actually hit it. I think we'll just leave it like this. We probably need some in order to get to the prescribed orbit anyway. Sun down. So I could lift up and I guess we'll lift up and try and get it on the next round instead of just waiting a whole lot. Might end up waiting a whole lot anyway. Depends how accurate this was. It was just eyeballing it. I may need to turn off these coronal mass ejection notifications. Reaction wheel on Needsat 2A, we were able to 
I, mean, I really need to up the reliability on these reaction wheels, jeez. Yeah, it's just a bit outside, that should allow it to catch up a little bit better. How many ignitions do we have left? We have 22 ignitions left in 17 minutes of burn time, so not any problems in, on that one. Oh, 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 it reads us as in orbit. Uh, of course, we're not really, really in orbit, and this is a horrible approach, but uh, we'll work with it for now. Oh, we're, we're on the way out. Okay. Orbit retrograde. Um, 7,700? Does that sound like a permanent capture to you? Gotta try it. Honestly, stop with the coronal mass ejections. Okay, yeah, it seems like it. And right about here-ish. And we're gonna wanna go, we're going around this way. So we're gonna wanna tilt that westward. I think. Let's verify. Yep. And we'll want to bring it in more. So retrograde a bit. Seven, six, five, four, three, one. Okay, that's good enough. We'll readjust that, that apoapsis, which should be close at the sending node. We're coming into periapsis, which is safe, um, except we need to keep an eye on communication, which should be okay at periapsis. Make sure we're facing the sun again. And how much delta V do we have? 680. Okay. So we've brought that down there, make sure we're facing the sun again, and then we'll boost up and it should be good. And on up. I don't know if the minus two degrees is going to be a deal breaker for it or not. We can adjust that after I boost up here. Well, that's a little bit off. We want to bring our orbit. Okay, it's satisfied with that. All right, we'll leave this be, and we will set it to sundown, and we fulfilled those contracts. Um, didn't we get the third one? Okay, yeah, we have to maintain stability. Or uh, wait, that's the previous one. Oh, I think I aimed for the wrong orbit. <laughs> okay. We were supposed to get into that orbit with this one. This this one doesn't have the mystery goo. Gosh darn it. We have to get back down into that orbit. Me talking away so overconfident. Do we have enough with 500 meters per second? I guess we'll find out. Okay. Okay, that's a good match on the periapsis. We have 389 meters per second left. Uh, let's orient to the sun again. And ignition one more time. It's not satisfied with that. Gosh darn you. Um, how many more ignitions? 11. It's pickier about this one, I feel. But okay, and then we'll go to the descending node and fix it. No, oh, we're in the moon's shadow here. We'll go to the ascending node and fix it then. Okay, ignition. Okay, now we got it. All right. They are now satisfied. We're holding stability for 10 seconds. We managed to get into both the prescribed orbits. Okay, there we go. Now we've got the contract. All right, all the contracts are complete, finally. Let's go back to the Space Center.
Okay, so now we have some possibilities. We've got 90 science. Um, we have enough money to upgrade the vehicle assembly building so we don't have to be limited to 30 parts. We could also go with the astronaut complex or the tracking station. Not all of the above though. But perhaps, so we still have a position satellite in a specific orbit of the moon and one in synchronous orbit of Minmus. And there's this um, science data from space around Minmus that should be easy. Um, and another specific orbit around Minmus. I can see a pattern here about what we're going to do. Adjusted orbit of Kerbin. I don't know if it's worth it. We'll see later. Let's focus on these uh, Moon and Minmus contracts. Yeah, but now we have a little bit more science, so before we do anything, I want the fuel systems so that I get... Uh, those lander tanks look good. Or not fuel systems, I guess. Propulsion systems. So I get my Oscar B fuel tank and baguettes and smaller tanks. The ant engine. Almighty ant engine. Yeah, spark. I mean, these are the good things. These are the good things in Kerbal Life. So let's get that. Um, let's see, these engines... Well, they're nice engines. RL-10. That's apparently an RL-10 as well. Lots of RL-10s floating around. And sure enough, a cryogenic upper stage right there. Okay, we're gonna try to launch three satellites again, but this time we're going to be launching one to the moon and two to Minmus. And we're still using the obelisk probe cores, because of course, but I'm not putting any of the real antennas on, because the helical antennas, because they're just going to be servicing the planets and we don't need more than 8,000 kilometers in that case. Uh, they'll still be able to communicate back to Kerbin, I think. But maybe I should put the helical ones on the... on the ones going to Minmus. Maybe it's not enough range. Let me see. Because um, it does depend on our... Tracking station range. Um, well, even at uh, DSN level 1, it's 248,000 kilometers for that. And I'll double check, but I don't think Minmus is that far out. I think it's 100 something. So I think we're okay. We'll go with that for now. And I've discovered how to change the uh, experiment inside. We've already done the telemetry report around Minmus. So I'm gonna set, or oh, and the moon, so I'm gonna set this one to be this light experiment. And I'm gonna increase the data capacity here. Uh, maybe just to one megabyte. These aren't sat uh, what you got, um, these are not science satellites after all, but we still want science. I changed the reaction wheel and data transmitter to high quality. Um, so configure un... Command experiment. Uh, there's this mite one, but that's really big. 3.26 megabytes. Um, we don't have that kind of size. But this one is also going to Minmus. The first one's going to the moon. That's carrying the goo container, remember? And then to this one's to Minmus, so it can carry a light as well. But how about this one? Maybe we can go with the mite and just let it gradually trickle in the science. We'll put two megabytes on. Okay. So we've got other sciences. So need sat three, let us launch. Okay. So I also added tanks, I don't know if you noticed, to the first two satellites. The third one didn't need a tank because it's gonna be permanently attached to this thing. So we didn't need that to have its own dedicated fuel. So here we go. Let's launch into a parking orbit first and far away. We'll do the same thing as last time. We'll just toss it up a little bit high. In theory, we've got one more or two more satellites to help us out, but, well, no, really just one more. The other one was so high up, I don't think it'd help. 
But I didn't wait for it to come around. I'm not going to check right now. Okay, separation and ignition. And fairing separation. I feel like there needs to be a gold foil version of the Oscar B fuel tank. I didn't see one. Or at least a silver foil. Put the textures and limited stuff to use. I mean, honestly, after all of this, uh, communication is going to be better around the moon and Minmus than it is going to be around Kerbin itself. Got a really high apoapsis that may or may not be helpful, but there we go. And let's see. Mm. Well, if we're going to Minmus, it'd be okay, but. For the moon, not so much. Not the worst either. We'll be right in the middle of our... We might be a little bit closer to periapsis when we need to burn. Moon will be coming around soon. Needs that to is sort of in an okay position to help. So... Ignition. Once we get to the moon, we'll just plop off the moon sat. And this will not get into orbit around the moon on its own. So Mimus is just 141,000 kilometers. Rather close to the moon's orbit compared to stock. Okay, that should be good enough. Got poor communications, but that's through Needsat 2A. I don't know why it's... I mean, I guess it's because we... I mean, we've got three... 8,000 kilometer range cores. That's only 4,600 kilometers above the surface, so maybe 5,500-ish kilometers away. Why should our communication be that low? I don't know. We extended antennae on all of these. Are they not additive? Hmm. First top distance, 5,300 kilometers, it says. Anyway, not important at the moment, but for our future planning, maybe. Okay, we are approaching, and uh, we are not going to be stopping at the moon with the main mission. I don't know what kind of orbit that leaves us in at the end, though, but we're pretty high up, so it's okay. Now, what we want to do is let go of this satellite right and yeah this should still be communication all around frankly now uh, we've got 1800 meters per second which should be enough so we want to do orbit radial in And which way around do we need to go? We need to go around the other way, so we need to do radial in a lot. The good old one kill newton, well not one kill newton, two kill newton thruster, the ant engine. I've only given it the regular reliability, so five minutes of burn time, and so we should not throttle down. <laughs> it's got enough ignitions, but... Okay, that'll be good enough. Communication wise, we should have communication near enough to periapsis to make it work out. We'll pay attention to the rest of the stuff later. For now, we'll just pay attention to this. And that's good enough for now. We still have 1530, so no problems. Point at the sun. Still got the rest of the pack right there, but still be going out soon. I think this direction will be best. Okay, I think the next correction at that ascending node, maybe we should be a little bit more retrograde. Or we could pull it... 
this way. Okay. Okay, so let, let me just take a peek at what kind of orbit that mission is in. I think it's in a safe orbit. I don't see its periapsis there. Maybe I should take a peek at where it's at. Maybe we should have gotten into orbit around the moon. It might have been better. Uh, tracking station temporarily. Oh no. Right? Okay. It's confusing me. Uh, I don't want it butt end to the sun. Come on. Okay, so... Orbit is technically okay. Got some weird inclination. I'm gonna just go prograde actually. And boost up to Minmus level right now. We currently have 1,200 in this stage. Hmm, might not have been the best location. Okay, this is not great. I'm gonna separate off that satellite and have it do things on its own. Because we're getting a little bit short on fuel. Okay, radial this way a little bit too. Or is that? That seems to be doing the opposite of what I want. Okay. In that case, this way instead. You know what? Maybe it's time to unlock the tracking station. <laughs> this is going to be complicated. Let's see, what does the other mission have? Oh, we can't jump to it right now. Okay. Now, uh, well, let's make sure this is pointed at the sun. Go to the tracking station. Okay, obviously this needs to point at the sun again. Uh, but this now has 1,261 meters per second to work with. Okay, but probably to get these to their destination, we're going to need to have the tracking station upgrade so I can plot stuff properly. Okay, that given, I'll turn back to the Moonsat and get it into its right position. Okay, so from here, we want to go north, up, 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 up. and maybe a little bit prograde. Okay, now a radial burn looks like, and that looks like radial in to me. Okay, that is the target orbit. Uh, this is the moon one. We have the mystery goo this time, and we fulfilled the uh, requirements. Anyway, tracking station is 300,000. I'm gonna unlock it now. Yeah. And then we still don't have enough for both of these. That would be wonderful. After the contract is accepted. Well, um, eventually. Let's just pick that up now. A specific orbit of Duna is interesting. That might be our first Duna go. I mean, might as well pick it up, right? It's got a 29 year duration and we'll get the advance. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, I will get Kerbals able to do EVA. We'll see. Anyway, let's fulfill those Minmus contracts now, hopefully. Okay, this episode is already running a little long, I think, so I've already plotted the maneuvers for both the probes. Uh, we've got one in 31 days, another one in 41 days, and it looks like we're already past the Duna window, so we'll have to come around. Uh, besides, we can't really communicate in interplanetary orbit right now anyway, so we'll have to wait on that, but let's time warp to that one. Okay, node. Finally using maneuver nodes. So we've got 28 ignitions, plenty of burn time on this decker. Ignition? Uh, what the heck is going on now? Oh, don't tell me the moon is getting in the way so we can't see what's going on with Minmus. Come on, I, I want to target Minmus. The moon really likes the troll probes that are trying to get to Minmus because the orbits are so close together. 
Okay, one more correction. Let's hope it works. Okay, now we seem to have an approach to Minmus. Is it a good approach? Not really, but I'll take it for now. Okay, this maneuver does not take as much as the other one, and also this probe has a lot more Delta V, so all better. And do we have an encounter? Yes, we do. Okay, so that's as planned. Unlike a certain other probe I could mention. Actually, this probe could do both. So in a pinch, if it turns out the other one can't get in quite the right orbit, at least it'll serve as a relay around Minmus. And uh, we'll use this one to get into the required orbits with its 1,900 meters per second. Okay, back to tracking station and we'll see which one comes in first. They're both coming in pretty close, uh, one an hour and a half before the other. The two, two probes are actually communicating with each other too. Alright, good times. Okay, ignition. Okay, we have captured. We'll sort this one out later after we do our business with the other probe. Alright, this is approaching its periapsis. And that's fine. Node. Oh, there's Minmus. It's sure looking more like the moon than Minmus, to be honest, but alright. It's not got its old minmus -y quality to it. So let's have this one get into the higher one. And then the one that's in the weird orbit, weirder orbit, get into the lower one maybe. Uh, so like when we're like that, so we're at this descending node, should we're going around like that, so we need to tilt this way, I think. Okay, that'll be a good start. Let's go there. Okay, shut down, off, uh, sun down. It's a little bit in, but pretty good. All right. Let's go over to the periapsis and bring the orbit down, and hopefully we'll have a good deal here. Okay, yep, it's accepted that. Alright, let's go to the other satellite and see if we can get it into that little green orbit there. Now, for now, of course, this will point at the sun. It has done its main job, but it may have an extended mission, if you will. Oh, uh, we might as well start at science and everything. It's got the light, so it's doing the light experiments around Minmus. It's also got a thermometer, but that's already been done around Minmus. So, uh, right about here, we're going to add a maneuver and Bring that down, but of course we need to keep retrograde. That seems okay right there. That's a good match. Alright, we will do that first. Ah, we got the light experiment done. Alright, ignition. And, and shut down. Hopefully that didn't throw us off too much. Seems okay. A little bit low on the periapsis. We'll see. Oop, oop. Get the sunlight, please. Okay, we'll do a little bit of inclination correction here as well as bringing the orbit down. Okay, how many ignitions do we have? 19 left. It's fine. Ignition. And shut down. Hmm. 
I don't know. Maybe even lifting it up here won't be enough. There is a gap here. Okay. Ignition. Oh, oh, it passed it. Gosh darn it. Can we still thrust limit things? Let's thrust limit things. Because there's too much force. We've got plenty of burn time, so it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, it's satisfied, right? We've done science there from Space Around Minmus, the light experiment. I have a thermometer. Oh, this one, this orbit needs the thermometer? I thought the other orbit needed a thermometer. Uh, let me see. I guess, okay, so we are going to have to move the other one to this orbit anyway. Because it needs a thermometer. All right. I wanted my commsats to be inclined orbits anyway. Uh, we can go via the map. It was the high one that didn't need the thermometer. And we're going to tilt our orbit. Bring it down. Tilt a little bit more than that. Bring it more down. That seems good to me. Okay, we'll do that maneuver. Oh, we're a little bit in the dark right now. Let's hurry up with this maneuver. Okay. Off uh, sundown again. Once we get back sunlight. Of course, we're on the nighttime side of Inmus right now. Okay, it's happy with that orbit. And uh, this time we have the thermometer, so we should get it done now. Yes, we have gotten it done. Uh, sundown, please. Okay, so that's a lot of contracts we've done. We've got left one more satellite around the moon, which we can wait on. Uh, Kerbal in orbit for 30 days, explore the moon, uh, and a satellite around Duna. But these little guys have done what they're supposed to do, and we'll look forward to them helping out with communications in the future. There's Minmus. Okay, so with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.